This is Defenders on TV Podcast Industries. We're back talking about Echo, Season 1, Episode 1, Chaffa. I'm growing concerned, Maya. You're not alone. We all mourn your father. I understand your age. Do you? My father was killed also. When I was 12 years old, the pain that I felt in the wake of that moment is something that I've never felt again since. Let me help you release this rage in, in a more constructive way. How? A job. You have greatness in you. Take your hurt. Your loss. Take your pain. Make it into something useful. Welcome back, fellow Defenders, to Defenders Podcast on TV Podcast Industries. We're talking about Marvel Spotlight Presents Echo Season 1, Episode 1, Chaffa. I'm one of your hosts, Derek. Hello there, fellow Defenders. I am your other host, John. And rounding out the group, I am Chris. Chris, 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 Chris. It's the only Echo joke I'm going to make today. <laughs> Are you sure? I'm glad you no, made it. I'm 100%. <laughs> Myself and John will just make, we'll make at least 20 Echo mm-hmm. jokes, and Derek will edit it down to probably that one, maybe one or two more. Oh, don't you love that they're still giving me editing jobs after all this time, and they don't they don't respect my time at all. It's all about their time and me fixing it in post. Sorry. Post, <laughs> that makes me post, sound post, like post, I really, post, I, post. I'm really really angry about it. I'm not. I can fix those really, really easily. Uh, but <laughs> it is a happy new year. We should say we did finish off last year uh, covering What If, but we're into the new year with TV Podcast Industries. The reason why I'm really saying that is because this is the 10th year of podcasting on TV Podcast Industries. So um, it's it's just really fun to be talking about some of the shows we're talking about this year and some of the ways we're going to be talking about the shows this year. Because if you think about some of our big shows, we did Daredevil, of course. Yes. And here we are in Echo featuring daredevil in this exactly. first episode which is kind of cool and, and also feeling very like the marvel netflix shows 100 percent mature content warning yeah and probably the big thing about it is because it's our 10th anniversary and because we're dealing with a show like uh like the netflix marvel shows we're going to cover it just like we did the netflix marvel shows one episode per week even though they were released in one day yeah. So we're spreading out the love. We are, absolutely. Five Much weeks. like a good piece of butter on warm toast. <laughs> yes. We're exactly. just going to melt all over your month. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yep. And that will take us right up to our 10th anniversary. Our first episode came out on the 27th of February, uh, 10 years ago, <laughs> 2014. <laughs> Uh, I had to do a little bit of mathematics there for no reason. Um, <laughs> yes. but, uh, but it should take us right up to uh, our actual 10th anniversary on the 27th of, of February. So uh, so looking forward to uh, covering Echo over the next five weeks. But the other thing, yes. we did get a reminder from Claire, one of our wonderful fellow defenders and, and uh, listeners for many, many years, got a reminder that we are getting the Penguin spin-off TV show this year, which is a spin-off of the Batman movie, of course, from Matt Reeves, set in the city of Gotham. And our first podcast, 10 years ago, was our Gotham it certainly podcast. Was. So here we are, 10 years later, having a Defender show and a Gotham show on in the same year. It's kind of cool, isn't it? It is. It's very cool. Who would have realized that fate could align the stars hmm. in such a way? Well, any other year, it wouldn't have happened, is the point. <laughs> that's why I find it so uh, intriguing. For me, it's just Colin Farrell playing Penguin. Mm-hmm. Like, that's yeah. crazy for me. Absolutely. Like, and a whole show about him and with him and that 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 penguin. Derek and I discussed this mm-hmm. a couple of days ago now. Uh, like, And I was like, this has been retooled. This yes. show has been retooled yeah. a couple of times. Yeah. And I'm like, this is going to be, it's been retooled, not re-edited, not changed. They they filmed what they wanted to film. Yes. It's just, it started off, initially, the budget started as one thing. It was, and Derek, and we, you can 
give the exact finer details, but I was like, I did not know that this is coming out of nowhere for me. Um, I can't remember that this was coming, and here it is, 2024. <laughs> <laughs> well, absolutely. And I say, Colin Farrell, I mean... I'd get in that fat suit afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sweaty, John. Pretty sweaty. <laughs> Breathe it in. Yeah, well, it was originally supposed to be even more connected to to our original Gotham coverage because it was supposed to be the GCPD TV yeah. show, which would have starred Commissioner Gordon, played by Jeffrey Wright from the Batman movies. So we would have actually been going back to GCPD this year if that had happened. And then there was supposed to be an Arkham Asylum show, and then uh, Colin Farrell signed on board to do uh, this uh, special series uh, coming up later this year but we're not here to talk about everything else we're covering uh, through this year i'm sure we'll talk no. about that in our 10th anniversary special which i'm penciling into our calendars for around the 24th or 25th of february very good so we can have it out on the 27th of february <laughs> mark it in your uh, in your calendars uh we're here to talk about echo um the new show from marvel uh all five episodes of the show were released uh, on uh, the 10th of uh, january um under a brand new banner this marvel spotlight banner so we have yeah. loads of banners for marvel tv now we have the marvel netflix shows of course we have the mcu shows uh we had uh marvel presents which was the uh, werewolf by night special that came out mm. um for uh, for halloween the year before last uh, and then the color version came out last year and now we have marvel spotlight marvel spotlight comic Comics are usually one-off comics, uh, usually uh, one standalone story. So I understand why this actually does suit Echo. Yeah, I, I would say so. I, but I mean, okay, we're only one episode deep at this stage. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if, uh, and depending on the story, of course, but Maya here played by Alacqua Cox, mm -hmm. you know, if she fits and and that and it's really good, then why not? have it more than just a one-off and certainly with the daredevil series coming out mm -hmm. as well there's scope for in there so if it's a hit because my my feeling from this first episode was it was like a warm comforting blanket mm -hmm. being back in uh a marvel netflix type show where it certainly doesn't pull its punches and certainly feels more adult i mean i know we've been sort of having a look back at the season one of daredevil mm -hmm. and i mean that was gritty it was. Uh, and yeah. i felt the same here you similar know, it, yeah it felt similar yeah yeah For definitely sure. similar in style uh, only available on uh, on uh, hulu in the us um, and only if you have your parental um access set and disney plus obviously uh, is merged with hulu over there so you have to have your adult settings or else you don't get access to this um but yeah, we, we went back and watched the first season of Daredevil and, and without a doubt it is uh, it is a much more adult show uh, and there is much more adult content in there than we've seen in any of the Marvel shows. Uh, but if you haven't heard our, our coverage of any of the Defenders shows, uh, they are available through our website at tvpodcastindustries.com. You can pop on over there, uh, go through the Defenders TV podcast. I think is, is the best link to get all of our coverage of all of the Marvel shows. But we covered every single episode of every single Marvel show on Netflix. Um and what's really interesting is, officially, as of this week, the Netflix shows have entered the MCU timeline. I saw officially this. on Disney Plus. So, yeah. uh, so they're all, all they've all been placed uh, where they would have appeared alongside the movies. So, uh, a, a, a step finally to bring them in. Uh, I believe the only show now, well, the only major show now, is uh, Agents of Shield that has not appeared on the timeline. But all they need is one quick moment, uh, one quick comment like happens here in this episode of Echo uh, to make them back into the MCU timeline. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but this, yeah, really good to to see the timeline there with the, the Marvel Netflix. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. But even all the TV shows, because even though it's in the timeline, you click into it mm -hmm. and then there's like, oh, three seasons. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. So if you do want to work through that timeline, mm -hmm. it will take a lot of time. It will. They didn't do. They didn't go episode by episode, unfortunately. Anyway, uh, let's get on with with Echo. We'd we'll love to hear your thoughts. As I said, we're going to be covering this weekly, uh, all five episodes, one a week. So you can get your thoughts into us by emailing us to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com. Just mark it which episode you're talking about. Or if you want to just put it in for the final episode, uh, just mark it about the whole season. Uh, you can also join us over on our Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash tvpodcastindustries. There's already a spoiler post up for each of the five episodes. Uh, on there just uh, again make your comment on whatever episode you want to talk about and we'll discuss them on the podcast yes or why not head on over to threads we are there because we want to get rid of x because it's 
Twitter's X. We just want to get rid of it like a bad smell, like an X, like you would. So head on over to Threads. We are over on Threads at TV Podcast Industries, and you can find us there and interact with us there and tell us your thoughts there, and we'll read them out on the next show. Well, the, the relevant show when we cover it. Absolutely. Good stuff. Let's get into it, guys. Yes, Derek, yes. what are some of the episode details? Well, I want to give a big shout out, of course, to the creators of Echo. Echo was created by David Mack and Joe Quisada uh, back in the day uh, as part of uh, at the Daredevil run. She did make her first appearance uh, in Daredevil, but uh, major character creators there, uh, David Mack and Joe Quisada. Really interesting. They were on the red carpet for the uh, the special presentation uh, last week. Nice. Uh, and David Mack was uh, specifically called out by... Um, Vincent D'Onofrio telling him that he was inspirational in his performance and his portrayal of uh, Kingpin when he initially started back on Daredevil. So really cool that he's got that recognition and that he's called out as creator of Echo uh, throughout the show. So a lot yeah. of the style, a lot of the, a lot of the um, movement that comes from the character comes from the comic book version that, that uh, David Mack helped create. Yeah, and, and David Mack's art is oh, just beautiful. fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I have I do have some prints of his mm-hmm. which are really just phenomenal uh, yeah. and he's yeah. very active in, in sharing his his artwork he as well which is. is great yeah absolutely he did one of the most amazing one which was actually echo's name in asl mm-hmm. spelled in asl which then we saw disney plus use in some of their promotional materials in live action they actually took photo- photographs of um the someone spelling echo uh, yep. E-C-H-O, uh, using ASL, and uh, it was great. And he commented, like, thank you so much for using my original art, like, or thank you so much for adapting my art for yeah. this. Uh, exactly. It was great. Yeah, yeah. So lots of inspiration taken there from uh, the head writer of the show is Marion Dyer, uh, known as executive story editor and writer on Better Call Saul uh, for 21 episodes of that show, mm-hmm. uh, the the prequel to Breaking Bad. Yes, never seen that either. Mm. Yeah, but heard great things about it. There's oh, absolutely. Lots of, yeah. Many, many fans uh, of Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. Um, the, this episode itself was written by Marion Dare, uh, Josh Fedman, Stephen Judd, and Ken Christensen. Uh, this is Josh's first writing credit. Uh, Stephen is best known as a producer on the TV show Dark Winds, which is about two Navajo police officers in the 70s Southwest that are forced to challenge their own spiritual beliefs when they search for clues in a double murder case. Good stuff. So, yeah. Uh, like, I'm really enjoying the team here. You know, as I say, not seen Better Call Saul, but it feels a really good fit, mm. what I know about it, for this more mature content That's type it. of show. Um, it's great having that um, diversity in uh, and on the writing team Absolutely. as well, given that not only are we dealing with someone who is, is deaf, mm-hmm. but also from the truck to uh people mm-hmm. uh yeah. peoples so yeah you know, you know, i think that's really really good it sounds yeah. like a great sort of cluster of people yeah absolutely and lots of consultants uh behind the scenes and uh, and behind the camera uh who've been involved in, in making sure this all uh represents the community as well they've actually put up a, a website uh the shock nation have put up a website specifically dedicated to echo and all the people that were involved so uh, that's really cool go, go check that yeah. out uh finally sorry just i uh, forgot to mention ken christensen uh, was a writer on the punisher for netflix one of the defenders shows on netflix as well so uh, explains cool. the blood it does it does uh, this episode was directed by sydney freeland i believe she directs uh, all the episodes uh, for the season um, as one of the central creators for the show but I, I'm not 100% sure I didn't skip ahead in case I got spoiled on what happens in the season uh, but she is a Mexican director who's directed two episodes of Reservation Dogs as well um, yeah yeah I love Reservation Dogs I still need to get into season two but mm-hmm. um, yeah season one I love you blew through that first season oh, yeah. Didn't you? Yeah. yeah and Devery Jacobs from yeah. uh, Reservation Dogs was in uh, What If and is plays a major role in uh, this season of Echo as well. So uh, that's kind of cool to get that yeah, crossover. Well, exactly. Certainly a few little parallels in the opening as well. There is. We will talk about it as we get into our major points. But first, John, do you want to tell us what they gave us with your synopsis for Echo Episode 1, Chaffa? Sure. After losing her leg and her mother in a car accident, Maya Lopez moves to New York City with her father, William, who has been shunned by her grandmother, who blames his criminal ways for the death of her daughter. William takes up a position as commander of the tracksuit mafia, working under Wilson Fisk, who becomes Maya's adoptive uncle. Years later, Maya witnesses Clint Barson's assault on the tracksuit mafia and kill William. Fisk arranges for Maya to work under him while promising to find William's killer. 
Some time later, Mayer would encounter Barton again, who reveals that Fisk was the one who arranged for William's death. Maya ultimately avenges her father by shooting Fisk in the face at point-blank range. Five months later, Maya, with a bounty on her head and on the run for shooting Fisk, returns wounded to her hometown, Tamaha, Oklahoma. She meets with her uncle, Henry. Maya asks Henry to help her dismantle Fisk's operations so she can take over his empire and become the Queen Pin. But Henry refuses to assist and bring death to the people he loves. Elsewhere, Fisk recovers from his injury in hospital. Hmm. Fisk not dead. I know. Yeah, I think we said at the end of Hawkeye, uh, as it faded to black when you heard the gunshot and you hear him falling to the ground, we're going... Well, he can't be dead. <laughs> we've still got Daredevil coming up, and we've still got Echo coming up, exactly. and we know he's in it. <laughs> but it was a bit of a shock. And the description of the episode said uh, something like Maya Lopez goes on the run after killing the Kingpin. I was like, spoilers <laughs> straight away. Uh, interesting. Um, so this episode, part recap, um, part catching up on the character, and part um, backstory backstory for uh, yeah. for Maya Lopez. Um Personally, just to kind of kick this off, I think this was done really well. I think this is a great way to kick off the series rather than doing everything in a five minute. You should go out and watch these episodes of Daredevil or these episodes of Hawkeye. I think putting it into this story for the hour long episode that we have here, uh, I think it worked really well. Yeah, I, I loved how this moved about actually mm. um, from that sort of opening sequence around um, the ancestral connection mm-hmm. and the the first uh Choctaw people through to then Maya's backstory the events that we saw in Hawkeye and mm-hmm. um, that Christmas special yeah. and <laughs> then just you know I guess that that little amuse bouche for then getting into the guts of uh the season the, the season yeah. uh, and, and then the big reveal yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. so I kind of liked it mm. uh same Usually I do, if there's a show or something coming out, Disney Plus will do the the Legends, the quick 10, 15 minutes. Here's everything you need to know about Scarlet Witch while she was X. Um, so you'd watch that. This was a a, 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 a unique way of telling that story because hmm. some of it I was like, that's a, that's a direct scene. Like they did not yep. refilm scenes. That's a direct rip of. Yep. The Hawkeye scene, mm-hmm. for example, where uh, where Ronan and um, Echo will kind of face each, off each other, and he tells her the truth. Mm-hmm. Um, those are direct scenes, and I was like, "Oh, hold on, wait, I know this." Um, it you could tell is because also uh, the the actress has bulked up and kind of got way more kind of um, uh, more fighting stance or fighting right. kind of size yeah. uh, now. Um, so you could tell because she just looks slightly different. Mm. Uh, she's a bit more muscly now, uh, than she was back in Hawkeye. So you can tell, I could tell, I was like, oh, oh, oh this, yes, okay, that she looks different slightly. Mm. Oh, I'm not talking about when she was the child. That's of course, a <laughs> slightly different person. Yeah. Um, but I really enjoyed it and it, it was good for the, the more casual viewer. Mm. So my wife and I watched it together and obviously she's not. As fanatic as myself and John and Derek in th- this thing, yeah. uh, in these shows. Um, but she was like, oh, that, oh, okay, now I do. Cause she did watch Hawkeye. She watched mm-hmm. Daredevil. Yeah. She just doesn't remember them as that as well as say we yeah. would. And she was like, oh, yeah, now I'm, oh, okay, now I remember what's happening. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. She, it, it was useful for the reintroduction, if you will. Absolutely. I, I must admit. I needed the refresher. I'm really glad of the refresher. I thought it was a really good way to do it. Uh, I'm sure I would have been able to pick it up from a couple of minutes of a of a refresher, but actually putting it into the story for the episode, I really enjoyed. Absolutely. Cool. And and there was a little bit of fondness for seeing the tracksuit mafia. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. as well. Bro, bro. Yeah, trust a bro. Absolutely. Uh, well, the way we're going to talk about uh, the episodes of Echo, we're going to talk about our top five fight points for the episode. Five point. Uh, number one, uh, two, three, four, and five. So uh, we're going to talk about our major moments for the episode, the things we enjoyed, so we can uh, hopefully get through everything that uh, that was covered in the episode. Um, so well, let's start with the start. Let's start start with our first fight point, which is the first Choctaw people. Um, 
this was a cool opening. Uh, really reminiscent for me of yeah. the uh, heart shaped herb um, and the uh, the ancestral plane in uh, Black Panther. Thought that was uh, that was yeah. a really interesting way to start it here with the spiritual side of the Choctaw people. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it was less so about the heart shaped herb yeah. for me. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm sure it was because I just recently watched and podcasted on What If, but the whole Kahori episode, mm. um, just because they were in a cave, there were the the blue motifs running through the cave, mm-hmm. the the pool of water, even though it was just a small pool, and because of what happens to them, you know, you just hear this distant rumbling, mm. um, then. It, it felt like they were transported via a portal mm. uh, into sort of an onto Earth uh, from a different place. I mean, I loved how, you know, the, I guess, like almost like clay peeling off yes. their, their their skin to reveal the skin. And um, so I guess that recent bias of having seen that mm. and probably played into it but you know because we had discussed at the time you know will there be kahori some kind of nod to that and it, it felt to me there was uh that kind of nod as well as to the heart-shaped herb but even with namor and uh the talicum mm-hmm. you know that this and again coming through from sort of that first peoples and mesoamericans uh of sort of north and central america so um i i I found this like really interesting and something completely unexpected i didn't expect that we would be going uh and oh sorry starting off like that absolutely and i did like how it weaved back into the story with sort of visions to maya uh when she's back uh home in um tamaha in oklahoma mm-hmm. uh, where she kind of gets jolted up by by seeing the woman leader shaffa mm-hmm. um the in, in her dream and i guess it you know playing sort of specifically into the spirituality and you know of their of ancestors of the choctaw nation mm-hmm. but also you know more broadly that spirituality uh of first peoples from north america Absolutely. you know yeah. I, I really really enjoyed that i mean it's something that's always been fascinating to me so mm-hmm. um i i kind of was really pleasantly surprised that yeah. it started off i thought you know it was just going to be blood splatter across the, well, yeah. the lens or something you kind of expect that it would take off directly from hawkeye uh that's how you start off your echo story you just give that final moment with her shooting kingpin and then you start your story i was really yeah. surprised that it started this way but very cool yeah personally i i I was enamored with how it began in that it it it, it straight away grabs your attention um because you are like wait what the what did I just put on um and it does le- make me question will we see any of this actually permeate through because my belief was echo was a more grounded kind of street level um kind of show um but if they they may bring in this as a way to explain her abilities, they may bring this in as a way to give her abilities, grant her abilities. We know this is at the MCU, so you do have you have the heart shaped herb stuff. You do have Kahori, this new introduction in the the multiverse. Mm-hmm. There is another version in the the, the standard Marvel six one six universe now on the on the, the MCU. Maybe there there's the Eternals. Like you have that as well, mm-hmm. so there is yeah. multiple. the The chance that they do have to bring this element in, maybe it's just a nice story, and that's another fine thing as well. Yeah. The reason I'm leaning less so is there is a uh, dream sequence again, yeah, briefly glimpsed later on, which we can talk about later. That leads me to believe that this. This will play some greater point, greater play throughout the series absolutely um uh, and i'm down to see how that is because yeah essentially it's just showing aliens well not sky people gods coming to earth being brought to earth by the sky falling it'd be interesting to see how how they weave this creation kind of belief into 
the, into an actual MCU element. Absolutely. Like, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So and I think that's, I think that's what makes it so interesting that they put it on screen the way that they've put this on screen. The, yeah. the creation belief, I had to look it up because I wanted to see, is this something that came from the Marvel writers or is this connected to the Choctaw Nation and, and their, their creation belief? And uh, taking it from Wiki, uh, this was not edited directly after the show. So it had, I, I took this before the, sh- the show came out. So, um, so it's not just directly related. Somebody didn't just copy and paste this from the from the description of the episode. So uh, what they say in the in the creation uh, belief, they say that uh, at the beginning there was a great mound. Um, it was from this mound that the creator fashioned the first of the people. These people crawled through a long dark cave into daylight and became the first Choctaw. For many years they lived in this area until a great shift occurred. At this time a great flood arose covering the lands and the Choctaw people had to flee by canoes to an island as guided by a dove. So what's interesting there is we have the cave, we have the the people being made of clay, and the clay falls off them when yeah. they come out of the cave. They're guided out of the cave by a bird, not a dove in this case, yeah. and it revisits them when they land in in our world, effectively, and guides them to the next place. And we do see that bird play another role later on in the episode yeah. as well. With, so with uh, it, it's the um, when Chula um, Maya's grandmother mm-hmm. is driving out um, before they go to the store yeah. uh, and it's interesting because as soon as I saw the the woodpecker I mean, and I mean I had to search it on Wikipedia I was like that must be some element within their um, belief system mm. uh, uh, and their storytelling uh, as well mm. and so it's kind of interesting I mean I probably don't have any pronunciation right but it, it's the biskinic which is a woodpecker type bird which right. kind of uh communicates to them by tapping you know mm. uh, and and pecking on, on the the timber so like i just thought it was a really nice little touch and again Absolutely. as you say it's brought through from this cave system mm-hmm. from the, this creation belief uh, through into um the the modern world yeah. uh, with uh, Maya's grandmother uh, and again it, it's that you know a portent to something but it, exactly. it would warn them including on the the great flood yeah yeah. So, so it's really um, interesting how much yeah. they took from the, the original creation belief to, to make this uh, part of the episode. So, of course, it is the intro, so they're not going to tell the entire, <laughs> the entire uh, creation story. But I, I like that they've referenced it here and they've, they play, they paid good homage and good, and good respect to it. And um, that's kind of it of the first point. Um, I think. Yeah. Uh, but I do want to have one little call out since we're yeah. Irish. Absolutely. There is a very direct connection between the Choctaw Nation and Ireland. Um, which we learned a couple of years years ago about uh, when a statue was put up in Cork, uh, one of our second major cities of Ireland, uh, commemorating the Choctaw people. Uh, because during the Irish famine, which happened during the 1800s, uh, the Choctaw people, having just gone through the Trail of Tears, a time when they'd lost everything, when they didn't have any kind of money or any kind of resources, they gathered together to give funds to the Irish people to help them during the Irish famine. So it's an amazing story that's connected the two communities for the Isn't last just, couple yeah. hundred years. Like, it's fantastic. Mm, it's really cool. And go see the statue in Cork if you ever come over to Ireland. It's really cool. Uh, really interesting statue. And hopefully I'll get down to see it uh, in Cork. It's yeah. not that far away. It's only about six hours. Yeah. Return. <laughs> Return. Six hours. <laughs> this is if I walk, John. Not six hours. <laughs> you can come too and you can drive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in which case it, it will, be, it will be down there in like half that time. Yeah. With yes. a stop. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, we move on to our fight point number two. Absolutely. Echo works for Kingpin. Yeah, so I mean, like after that tragedy of the death of her mother mm-hmm. and also with the prosthetic um, lower leg that mm-hmm. Maya gets um, and moving to New York, we see Echo uh, becoming involved with with kingpin Mm -hmm. um at initially again i actually thought this was a bit of a dream sequence but initially sort of kingpin meeting her at the karate club that she's at uh, where she spots her her father uh william passing uh, a brown envelope across Mm -hmm. to some unsavory guy at the door yeah Uh, and he's he's wearing his tracksuit from the tracksuit as well so Um, these are all these scenes are the ones from hawkeye if you if you remember those were the moments the first time we saw wilson fisk was in that fight club um and we heard his voice and we just saw the side of him. We were going, oh, my God, Wilson Fisk's going to be the show. And then he 
it took two more episodes to actually see yeah. uh, Wilson Fisk well, in the show. So, uh, so I do remember that. But there are new scenes in there as well, uh, expanding on the story of Maya as she's growing up in New York and kind of, uh, kind of adding to what we saw in Hawkeye. Yeah, yeah. And I'll call out one very special bit here. The scene where Maya is in the um, motorbike shop and is one of the first instances where we see the world or hear the world as she experiences it mm-hmm. um, as, a, as a deaf person because it removes all sound. Yeah. For a split second, I did some, think something was wrong with my Disney Plus. Really? <laughs> because I was just like, wait, 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 hold on. Why is, uh, okay. Got it. Yeah. This is fantastic. Amazing. Yeah, it was. Um, it really and- reminded me of the the lens play that they did with, with Daredevil as well. Yes, uh, exactly. You know, in terms World of on fire. focusing in, sort of blurring all the edges apart from, mm-hmm. say, his ear or his eyes or his face and so on. Like, it just that connectivity through uh, between these two mm-hmm. was really, really good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, absolutely loved that scene uh, as she's stealing the motorbike from the high-end motorbike shop sets it up to go out through the window and smash into the police car it's just so um rebellious is what i what yeah. i probably say so again she's not on missions from kingpin here she's lost um she's lost everything she's lost her mom she's living in new york her father's in a criminal in a criminal gang and she's acting out here uh, that's that's all that's happening but i love how it was how it was done Again, as you say, as the sound drops out and you see the bike going through what would be a massive explosion through the window and crashing into the police car, it's only as it hits the police car, all the noise rushes back in. I thought it was a great choice by yeah. the director here. Yeah. Really cool on the sound designer. Yeah. Yeah. No, and again, that just continues on throughout this episode. Mm-hmm. Through, through, there is one part, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, where you hear the heartbeat that she was feeling oh, yeah. of a person stop and until it stops and it break like that is for me it, outside of the actual choreography outside of, it's a fight scene well and it's a fight scene with just before dd comes in um it it for me is just so amazing yeah absolutely it, because it was just that's what she's feeling in yeah. her bicep as she is strangling this person yeah uh, and to the point of i was expecting it Kind of like oh, there was one. Snap. So, but, yeah, there was one. Yeah. She broke his neck. Yeah, oh, no, I no, just, I, no. Remember, we were watching this with uh, with subtitles, uh, as we always do when we're when we're podcasting about the show, and it specifically comes up and goes two heartbeats beating <laughs> as in subtitles, and then it goes spine shatters. One heartbeat beating. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wow, go subtitle person for describing that 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 scene. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so spine shattered is what happens okay. to uh, to that guy right there. Uh, let's talk about that because again, another callback to the Daredevil shows and, and, and specifically that kind of set this whole wonder uh, scene up, the idea of having a fight scene that looks like it's all done in one take. And they set this up in this episode of this, this moment really of Maya moving into the criminal underworld, working with Kingpin, working for Kingpin, as he's cr- trying to defuse the bomb that could be Maya uh, herself and what she's going to unleash in the world well, if he doesn't I'm, direct her into a path that he wants to direct her yeah. into. Yeah, I mean, th- this is where Fisk is manipulating her, but using her rage from the death of her father at the hands of Hawkeye mm-hmm. uh, for his purposes. Oh, really? uh, you know, I mean, I, I love that moment in the car where he has his signer mm-hmm. uh, in there and he, he wants to use her, um, her abilities, you know, at the karate club is, you know, he recognizes there's potential and, mm-hmm. um, in Echo, and I love the fact that he talks about the death of his own father, which oh. was by him yeah. with a hammer, at oh. least from the Daredevil series. Absolutely. Oh, um, I lost my father when I was 12 years <laughs> old. Uh, it was it was terrible to me that that echoed through my life uh, forever after. It's like, you killed him. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that, like, was, that was the, the uh, central plot line from Daredevil season one, was effectively learning that Wilson Fisk murdered his own father. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so. so, you know, I just thought, oh, okay. And I mean, again, it's like, it's this pervading criminality as well, you know, because you see William leaving and um, with Maya to get this job in New York. Mm-hmm. Um, they leave together, you know, his mother-in-law effectively blames him, you know, 
talks about the Lopez brothers, him and his brother Henry. Yeah. Uh, you know, coming from a, a family with criminality, mm. thugs, and, and all this. And you can get that sense from William. He wants to sort of build this new life. You know, he says, you're going to grow up and have a different life from me. And mm-hmm. in the end, um, with his death at the Fat Man Auto Repairs. Yeah. She's being pulled in by the gravity that is uh, Fisk so, uh, into his world and being used um, for his purposes. And of which this fight scene is just, you know, is part of that where it's interrupted by Daredevil as he's going in to take out another group um, that's creeping in on his territory. Yeah. So, but this fight scene is awesome. It's absolutely awesome. Again, like you said, Chris, that in and out of the the sound as yeah. as she's fighting. Yeah, but I even um, I even mean you know? from that opening moment when they walk into um to this this club to go and and uh, effectively join this meeting that the people that are there yeah. think that, that she joined the meeting from that moment onwards it is all one shot or it's all Yo, it's supposed to look like one shot yes. of course you can see some of the cuts and that's exactly as you've always been able to see in in the winners but i do love it because it's all it all feels like it's from Maya's perspective as she's going in they're trying to explain to her what to do they're not giving her very much instru- instruction it's basically I think the final instruction that they get is we're going to go in here and shoot some people making the sign of a gun with their fingers is that okay and she goes mm, I guess so <laughs> like doesn't really know but they follow along and they love you see one of the guys dodges to the left circles around and as they come towards the door he's made his way back around again shoots the guy the door man in the face um, and and then they go into the room and the fight begins and it's just move after move um yeah is so well choreographed i think i, I love these types of scenes i think they did a great job here uh, of incorporating into echo and would we have wanted any less uh given how much we love those scenes within daredevil uh than the arrival of daredevil into the fight that turns into another uh one shot fight between the two of them how cool was that there's some great daredevil moves as well that come out of this you know you can tell oh, it's yeah. an experienced character here uh playing daredevil uh, charlie cox remembers how to do these moves of course he's not doing them i know he does have uh, have a, a double to do uh, a lot of the moves but that moment when he flips over the fence and then flips through a set of shelves uh to get around mayor is so cool oh absolutely yeah. i i definitely squealed at the one where he just you know it's thread the needle mm-hmm. effectively through the shelves just with the legs i squealed at that I yep. was very happy with that move. Um, <laughs> it looked like it was straight from the comics. Um, yeah. I was like, oh, that's just beautiful. Beautifully done. Um, yeah. I have to say. Um, so for me, yeah, this, this, the whole choreography, the camera placements, the sound, uh, all of it. Uh, as well as you know just the story of it um really really good and yeah. and it was kind of good because well you got the sense i mean maybe it was just me got the sense that maya was taking a bit of a while to warm up as to what she needed to do yeah, like absolutely. she was hanging back from the initial engagement yeah. with this group you know maybe part of it was down to their limited instructions uh but you know, or was it her being tactical, just surveying what needed to be done mm. and then going into it? I mean, even her move with her prosthetic leg. So I love the fact that Daredevil striking with his billy clubs, mm-hmm. hitting the metal of um, her prosthetic. Yeah, uh, I love brilliant. that she kind of employed that leg with the prosthetic to, because of the metal, the additional weight of it, sort of using it against daredevil's mm. head you know targeting his head so cool so like th- this fight scene was just spectacular yeah loved it there's not much more i can say but i'll be i'll be very quick on this just for me this did exactly what they set out to do yeah it uh shows you who echo is like it sets up her character in that mm. she is questioning what she like well, what am i supposed to do here like why is kingpin and you see the points of her growth throughout this fight. Yeah. From where she shows, guy tries to feel her up mm-hmm. and she puts him in his place outside yes. before we even get to the fight. To that point of, I wouldn't say no return, but the point of change where guy falls on her when she's standing in the doorway mm-hmm. 
And she he starts beating her and she's like, oh no, get, and the rage builds and then yeah, yeah. the monster is loose. And then that point onwards, the one shot reminiscent of Daredevil, yeah. of the actual original show, like you, Derek, you called the best. Like it's not a one shot. Yeah. Fine. It looks close to, it mm-hmm. is, it is not sp- it's spectacular, but it is enough enough of a, a cinematic piece that you're like, oh, this looks, this is really, really cool. Yeah. Like, all the way back from Matthew Vaughn's Kingsman, like the original Kingsman, where he's like, we, we see that fight scene in the church. Everyone that, when that first came out, was like, oh my God, mm-hmm. this is a fantastic, like, camera spinning with a person spinning had never been seen before. Yeah. It is still impressive today. Yeah. You see that camera follow the person as they spin uh, and fall. Yeah. Two scene Daredevil. They could have put this in episode four. Mm-hmm. Like the, the, the introduction of Daredevil. Yeah. Like, Cause everyone knew Daredevil was coming. Yeah. No one knew when it was co- happening, but it was spectacular to see it now because hopefully we'll see him again later. Mm-hmm. But it also just, it was great to yeah. have it because we knew it was coming. So it was like the pent up relief of, <laughs> oh, it's, oh, it's so good. Just look yeah. how great. Cause we know Daredevil's coming in his own show later. Yeah. So just seeing that here now, mm-hmm. giving us taster of who Daredevil will be again, timing yeah. wise. This is what around season two of the, uh, the, the kind of actual original Netflix shows. Uh, because I was looking at the suit. I'm trying to, I was gauging it by the suit. Mm. So around season two, season before season three, I think around then. Maybe. Um, I, I think it might be just after season three. Um, oh, could be after season yeah. three. Yeah. yeah. I'm not entirely sure, I, to be honest. Yeah. Um, like every, everybody was still in play after the yeah, end of season I, yeah. three of Daredevil. There's nobody that's off the table. Nobody's dead of, of the major characters that we see here. So it could absolutely be at the end of season three. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's, it's still a, it's still a while ago, I suppose. This is, this is the start of Maya's time working for Kingpin. So well, there's a few years there, I suppose. It, it's also yeah. just the, the lawyeriness of Daredevil as well. You know, as he's fighting, just saying, I've been staking this place out <laughs> and then you guys come in and, you know, you've ruined it. Basically. You've, um, you've basically just ruined my whole week. I've been watching yeah. these guys for <laughs> ages. Uh, I was about to take them down myself and then you walk in and take yeah. my collar. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I did really like just that moment with, uh, with Charlie Cox as, as, uh, as Matt, uh, underneath the mask. <laughs> it did feel very yeah. lawyery, Matt. Uh, great stuff. Yeah. I don't know whether we're going to see Daredevil again. Uh, I'm sure some of our wonderful fellow defenders have already watched uh, all five episodes and know that we, whether we do see Daredevil again in the season, but what a great way to introduce him. And as you say, Chris, that laying out of intent for when we do see Daredevil in his own, um, yeah. What do we say? Sixteen episode series uh, currently well, yeah, for, yeah. for Daredevil: Born Again, but nobody knows how that's going to go because it's all been re- retooled. But it will be coming hopefully very soon to Disney Plus. Um, right, that's it for the Daredevil fight and Echo Works for Kingpin uh, in our fight point two, fight point three. It's pretty basic. It is just the fact that there is that Hawkeye recap, the story uh, leading up to her shooting and what we thought was killing Kingpin or well we knew we'd, we knew she didn't kill Kingpin but is there anything else you wanted to pull out from that kind of flashback sequence this, the, the kind of pulling everything together there from Hawkeye and uh, the story that we know of Maya so far I just like the thud of fists going down because mm-hmm. you know at the time of watching this you were like well you were talking about the spoilers and I was mm-hmm. like no he, he there was the thud from Hawkeye it's like you were saying Chris yeah. you know They've really utilized the Hawkeye footage Mm -hmm. and that storyline really well. And I I would say it is taken from there. Maybe there's some slight sort of uh, pickups and what have you that are being done, but it's, it's really good. And along with that thought, I mean, quite frankly, and I know we'll come to it with our last point. Um, I thought that was relatively final, (laughs) um, given (laughs) the dump and the point blankness of, of the shot so again it the the recap from the hawkeye series was i thought really really yeah. good and i you know and you forget actually from that series just the slight different strands running through yeah. it really yeah. because yeah. there's the whole thing with kate bishop but yeah. that's not really addressed in here because exactly. it, it doesn't relate to this but yeah. you know again it was just really good to get that 
recap from Hawkeye. I mean, yeah. even him telling Maya about the double cross effectively, you know, that Absolutely. he had learned uh, about the death of her father, you know, clearing his own name for that supposed killing. Yeah. You know? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I have to say seeing Jeremy Renner back here uh, as, as Ronan, it is again, as Chris mentioned, it is from uh, the Hawkeye series, but having it all condensed and kind of uh, accordion back in to this being the story of Maya. Yes, we may have seen it in Hawkeye, but it was spread over six episodes, a show much more focused on Clint Barton and uh, and Kate Bishop. So having that story condensed in here into this episode so that we know who this character is going forward, I think it worked really well, but, but cool to see Renner in there too. Uh, and yeah, the dropping of Kingpin. Yeah, no, I, I can't agree more. And the Renner bit did make me go, oh, yeah. Obviously, he did have an accident. Uh, for those who aren't aware, Jeremy Renner had an accident with mm-hmm. a snowplow uh, two Christmases ago yep. and has been on a massive road to recovery. Um, and I, when I first saw him, I was like, is that, no, no, same scene. Yep. Nope, same scene. Yeah. No, he's not him back. Um, I was like, oh, bring me, give me my original Hawkeye. Just, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully we'll get some form of cameo. I don't think we will, but hopefully we will. Yeah, yeah not not just yet, but I know um, they have confirmed he's filming the third season of his uh, of his own show. Has uh, starting filming in a couple months time. So um, so he's definitely on the full road to recovery. Yeah, yeah. I kind of also just quickly uh, and to, I guess to close this point out, I kind of like the bookend of Hawkeye's involvement here, where he does say to Maya when he's telling her about uh or the truth about her father Mm -hmm. and that you know you're the same as me you know blind with rage it conceals the truth and and, you know you're blind to that truth yeah and but it's that bookend of with kingpin trying to again say you know it's that it's that mechanism of well i'm like you you know, I'm like you because my father died. I happened to kill him. I'm not going to tell you that. Mm-hmm. And and here Hawkeye saying, you know, I'm like you. Yeah. To try and sort of bed in that he's telling the truth to her. Whereas Absolutely. with Fisk's, it's to conceal a lie. Mm-hmm. And I... I I really liked how that played out. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I t- totally agree with you. That, that idea that he's kind of going, yeah, you could get your rage used by somebody else turning you against everybody. Yeah. And that's exactly what Kingpin had done. So it's quite cool. And one other final thing is, dare I say it, it's not only in zombie movies that you should double tap someone. Well, yeah. Uh, always. Well, you, you know, always double tap. Yes. Not in real life. In, in yeah, drama in shows. Yeah, in <laughs> exactly. yeah, absolutely. And Zombieland uh, taught us absolutely. always double tap always double zombie. Tap. Absolutely. Otherwise they'll come back to life. Does that mean Fisk is a zombie? Who knows? We'll see in Marvel's in Marvel zombies. Marvel zombies, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on to our fight point number four, the return home to uh, Tamaha, uh, Oklahoma. I suppose this is where our new Maya story begins. Uh, and interestingly, there's a five-month uh, time jump again. Chris, you said she'd become much more muscular. There is five months later here after yeah. the death of Wilson Fist that she's returning. Uh, she had another bullet wound um, from a completely different, unrelated event. I, I don't know. There was something about when she arrived back in Oklahoma looking for help uh, with this bullet wound. I was like, did she get that in Hawkeye? Did I see that? Did I, I, was did I miss that thing. moment or yeah. something like that? Why did she go all the way from New York to Oklahoma to have a, a bullet dealt with? Surely she knows someone in New York. But no, there's that five-month uh, time jump to, to she gets back there uh, and uh, meets up with her uncle Henry at the roller rink. This was cool. I was so glad to see that she does. that. There is that time jump because it, I very much like you, I was like, Wait, wait, what? Uh, what just happened here? <laughs> uh, and then seeing her go to, um, her first, her gr- grandma's house mm-hmm. and getting, sewing herself up with the classic floss technique. Yeah. Floss and a uh, uh, fishing hook is what you can do to sew up a bullet wound. Minty but fresh. Wounds. Yes. <laughs> of course, that minty fresh will always make you infected, mm-hmm. which we find out. Maybe she wasn't infected. Maybe that was just the mint coming out of her skin. That oh, the, the oh, horrible, oh, gross, oh, oh, oh. Uh, green mint coming out of her skin. Um, <laughs> Let's hope the, the one the, Before we get into the rink, I did want to call out this scene where she is, she falls asleep on the couch. Mm. And yeah. we see flashbacks yes. of what looks like both her in a previous age or previous lives uh, and type thing so it's whether it's her in a previous 
No, no, no. There is one where she is dressed in what would be classic Native American garb. Okay. Um, and one looking like a Western. So again, don't know. Maybe it's her younger past lives, or maybe it's just her younger self when she mm. was before she left. I'm very interested to see how this plays in. And again, is it any way linked to the opening um, where we, we mm. saw the, the creation belief uh, for the, the Choctaw people? Is it, again, some kind of, there is a link between all this and this is maybe yeah. she becomes a bit more Absolutely. of a super powered individual maybe. versus someone who is just right now really good at reading people. That's yeah. kind of her power at the moment. Mm. Well, that's it. I mean, it's also because, you know, yeah, because she's passed out on uh, the sofa after her sort of DIY flossing. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's this kind of connection through this, you know, maybe fever dream mm. or something to that spiritual plane um, that, it you know, that, that comes flooding in yeah. uh, with, I guess, what's happening with her body. So I, I kind of like like you, Chris, I really thought this was interesting Um Certainly given kind of sort of the naming of the episodes, or at least this first episode being that female leader of the the first of the Choctaw yep. Nation, mm -hmm. uh, Shaffer. Yep. So, um, yeah, I'd be really interested to, to see that. And also, um, you know, then she meets Biscuits. Yes, she does. Which could also have come from a fever dream. <laughs> I didn't know you could call someone Biscuits because I would I would be a malted milk. Should we call you? And this is Malted Milk this from is malted TV milk. Podcast yeah, exactly. Industries. Yeah. <laughs> or Chocolate Malted Milk. Well, of we course. could get yeah, MM. MM. There you yeah. go. Mother's Milk. It, it's in the boys. Exactly. For another show we cover. We'll just yeah. call you MM. From yeah. There you go. Yeah. Or CMM. I'm just Chocolate Malted, malted Milk. milk. <laughs> yeah. Love us. Love us. <laughs> um, <laughs> Which but, was quite yes. good to see Biscuits here because he is mentioned briefly because he, he wasn't able to do the, the, uh, he, he wasn't able to make the kind of camp uh night that they were going to have before it started pouring down yeah. from the, the the start but um you know the 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 thing here just to kind of put the context on this bit is that you know she's been away yes it's five months later mm -hmm. but it's 20 years gone exactly. since she was last there yeah uh, and leaving abruptly with her dad to go to new york yeah um and you know she is on the run uh, you know, the wound is a result of, um, Fisk's collected men sort of mm. hunting her down. We do find out there is a bounty on her. And mm -hmm. um, so, you know, she is in a precarious situation here. And yet, you know, he is really excited to see her, but she really wants to keep it on the, the, the down low yeah. because of this bounty. But you get the sense. You know, with her, um, with Bonnie, again, she doesn't want Bonnie to know that she's been there. And we get this running through her time back uh, at her hometown. Yeah, absolutely. So it was really important to mention Bonnie as a, as a character, because I presume she's going to be quite a big character in the show. <laughs> you yeah. know, they, they had that sleepover together at the beginning of the episode where they effectively may is saying to her, you know, just my cousin, you're my sister. When she leaves, it's it's Bonnie that she's calling for to come with them to New York. Yeah. Um you see when her father dies and, and May is at the funeral, it's Bonnie that contacts her and says, I'm always here for you. I always have been. Um and May ignores the text, but you get the feeling that they have been in contact for the twenty years, even though May has been ignoring her, Bonnie potentially being the one that's reached out. Yeah. But here she is uh, back in uh, back in her hometown and being told if you finish whatever business is that you have here and don't tell Bonnie you'll break her heart completely um, so yeah so Bonnie's going to be an important character and as I mentioned up front played by uh, Devery Jacobs although we haven't seen her on screen very much from a very far distance uh, across <laughs> across the way we've seen her but uh, played by Devery Jacobs who played uh, Kahore in the, in What If and of course mm -hmm. was in uh, Resurrection Dogs as well so um that's really interesting. But the, the reason why I'm, I'm specifically called that out here is because you're both mentioning about this ancestral uh, connection to, uh, to the Choctaw Nation's, um, creation. Um, it makes me wonder whether potentially Bonnie is playing a character who isn't from the Choctaw Nation, who maybe is from the Mohawk, uh, tribe and has a direct connection back to Kahori. I wonder uh, if that's, maybe, if that's yeah. the way they may play. That'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, is, is she a direct descendant from Kehori in this world? 
Interesting. Cool. Yeah, yeah, that would be really interesting. And um, the other interesting thing is that roller skate rinks are alive and well. Yes, they uh, are. And I have to say, uh, Black Crow's uh, roller rink uh, it was phenomenal with its little <laughs> uh, sign, Make America Skate Again. There you go. Yeah. Doesn't need to be just America. I will let you boys know there is one in Dublin as well. Really? There is a roller rink in Dublin down on the Long Mile Road. Excellent. There you go. Well, <laughs> then we're going, Chris. <laughs> right, down. Red light, green light, all the way. Exactly. Excellent. excellent. Engage core, everyone. Engage core. Uh, I do. I do remember it well from uh, from the top hat and delivery uh, where we used to go as kids. So, yeah, no, uh, I the, remember the old it. local road, road, road. But I love that Maya calls it out to uh, to Henry to to Henry Blackroll, uh, where she says to him, "You've been using this exact same thing since the nineties. Can you not change it up a bit after all these years?" So she remembers back to when she was a kid doing exactly the same thing that these kids did uh, in the roller rink. So uh, I, really, I really like that. That was a, a good touch. But in here, we also find out, as you say, John, there is a uh, a bounty on Maya's head because um, the guy who's supposed to be helping out, the guy who works at the roller rink, uh, who works for Vicky, for uh, Henry, yeah, Vicky. Um, who works for, for Henry and he calls it out that he works for him uh, in other places, not just in the roller rink. So I presume that means in his criminal endeavors. Um, but he calls in the bounty to see if he can effectively get the money for reporting Maya. Yeah, he may have a lead, exactly. Mm. Like, I really like this because at the time of watching it, as soon as Vicky started doing the, the texting, I was like, but how would he know? Like he, he's a dude at a roller, mm. uh, a roller rink. Um, I was kind of like, how how does he know here? And this is what I love about the show because when Henry and May are up on the water tower, again another iconic kind of image of mm. of America for me that that water tower. You see the telescope being passed around. You know, like you say, it will break. Bonnie's heart if she knows you're here and you don't tell her. Mm -hmm. Then she goes, now your turn. And there is the Fisk shipping depot in town. Mm -hmm. You know, Fisk is woven, not just in New York, but yeah. throughout the country. Yeah. Really like that. And Henry is effectively, you know, one of his managers by the sounds of it. And, mm. um, you know, he knows connected. Yeah. he's connected in some way. You know, Henry, Henry got the job for William as far as I could tell. Yeah. When William moved to New York, I it's guess Henry so. that had that connection to Kingpin, I think. So he knows the deal with Fisk yes. and, and his organization. Yes. So I, I just really like that um, sort of just you know, really making it clear mm -hmm. that this isn't an accident why A, Maya has gone to see Henry because she knows she can get an, you know, off the books proper Undertaker? job done yeah. <laughs> quote uh, on on her um her wound and yeah. have the stitches replaced and everything sorted out and Gretchen was a nice bit of comedy relief here yeah, I yeah. really enjoyed this uh, the mortician um and I, again as Henry's signing and Gretchen gets more and more technical with what <laughs> she's saying he's kind of like throws his hands up in the air yeah. and says you know I don't know yeah. <laughs> what I, I don't know how to sign this or I just don't know what she's talking yeah. about. And eventually just signs the important part. She's not here to embalm you today, yeah. basically. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Uh, we can. Uh, I love that little yeah. uh, bit. It was it was just good to have that little bit of injection of humor here. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, speaking of that humor, for me, the writing on this episode really sets a beautiful tone. Yeah. We've got some amazing dramatic moments we've mm -hmm. got some amazing action moments we've got some amazing just narrative kind of dialogue um and the, the delivery this is a tough one for me because mm. i it's one of the I, I i'll be very honest i i don't watch many films or tv shows that ha that are predominantly Delivered via ASL through yeah, American Sign yeah. Language. It's you, there's not that many, Chris. No, <laughs> in fairness, exactly. you know, it's not, it's there, not your there's fault. Definitely, there's <laughs> definitely some indie films that I, I, yeah. I'm aware of, and I've been told, "Oh, you need to watch this and check this." Out. Well, the Oscar-winning um, movie Coda would be uh, would be a movie mm -hmm. that's told primarily through uh, through yeah. ASL. So, um, yeah, it's a pretty recent yeah, one, but there's one. there's just not that many examples of it, and that's what makes no. this show so special. You know, we yeah. we always talk about representation being so important. You know, seeing 
you on screen is really important. And if you do it as well as this, you know, we're not only seeing a drama told through ASL, we're seeing a massive action show with the lead actress who has to use ASL to speak to everybody around her and everybody around her is interacting with her with ASL. And you're seeing her struggles that, 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 uh, yeah. that great moment with Vicky in, uh, in the skate uh, park where he's ignoring her. And she's trying to get his attention by ringing the bell. And he treats her like dirt. He's like, but I've got a headache. Stop ringing the bell. Oh, you're not giving the information. The strong, silent type, are you? You know, kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. And you find out as the conversation progresses, he knows who she is. Well, and yeah. So he knows her reputation. And he probably knows that she doesn't speak. And he's just treating her pretty badly. Yeah. Like with the security guard just before the, the, the battle of dead. Yeah. You know, yeah. again, it, it, that's the thing. It's got so many layers because people are absolutely multi-layered. So, you know, Mayor is also an amputee. Um, yeah. and yeah. that is being represented here. Absolutely. As well as being of the, the Choctaw nation, mm-hmm. you know? So this, it's really, really good because it shows the complexity of life, um, here absolutely. represented through Mayor. Uh, and how that plays into the storyline, which yeah. is really, really good, as well as then having, you know, this relationship with Bonnie um, that is, you know, weird because of them being parted for so long. Yeah. Yeah. And in a sense, I guess, Maya dealing with so much of her own stuff, in a sense, has let it float off because there is that great moment on the water tower where and I love how just Maya goes, you know, it, it's your turn, signs, mm-hmm. it's your turn as she moves it away from it, focusing on Bonnie to yeah. uh, Fisk's depot. Yeah. Where he says about it would break her heart mm-hmm. and Maya believes that her feelings have got nothing to do yeah. with her. Um, and he disagrees. It's like they should. Exactly. Um, you know, you were so close. Yeah. And um, so her sister. Yeah. I really liked just how uh, this is so sort of structured and layered through with absolutely. all these different aspects. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just just one for our, our wonderful fellow defenders. If you haven't if you haven't checked it out, there's an interview with uh, Sydney Freeman, the director of the episode, who talks about the representation that's brought uh, brought alive in the episode, and specifically talks about not the challenges, but how they wanted to show ASL. Uh, on screen because one of the things I certainly wouldn't have been aware of is ASL is effectively using your hands to make the letters of of words and then um, then there are uh, there are other pieces to the language itself but one of the fundamental parts of it is there is the facial expressions that go along with how someone signs a word will also add to the interpretation. So she wanted to make sure that on screen you can see when someone's signing angrily or someone's signing afraid or worried or uh, or, or someone's signing uh, happily on screen. So that's why you're seeing a lot of close-up of, uh, of Maya when she's only able to use ASL with other people around her. She's not able to verbalize what, what word she's saying. So you need to get the intent from her face and from, uh, and from the signing. So I think that they've done a really good job of, of showing that on screen. It's, and it, it works really well. You see it in loads of different, uh, situations. You yeah. see it with Kingpin and his, and his interpreter and you see it with people close to Maya who are used to that shorthand with her of how to, how to talk with her. But it, I think it's cool. I think it looks really great on screen. So well done for the for the showrunners and the uh, the creators of the show for for showing it as dynamic as it is uh, yeah. on the yeah, show. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. Uh, anything else about the return home to uh, to T- Tamaha uh, before we just talk about our last point really quickly? Well, just to connect into our uh, fight point number five, it's not just for the stitch up that she's come back absolutely uh, to Tamaha. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Our, our final point really is Queenpin, because this is, you know, we said we kind of went through the stages, setting up Maya, who she is, talking about the Choctaw Nation, talking about the history of Maya, and uh, that she has come home. And then the final piece is, what's the plan? What is what is this five episode season about? Why is Maya here? And what, what is her plan? And she reveals that she wants to um, be Queenpin, effectively, that Kingpin has had his time uh, as, as leader. Uh, she put a bullet in his head so uh so he's gone now there's a vacuum um and she feels she is going to step up into that vacuum as effectively his heir well that's it it's like um she wants to send fisk's men a message uh which interestingly is that she believes assumes that she killed him and then obviously you get the lovely 
moment where uh, you hear heavy breathing from a hospital bed. Mm -hmm. Pirate Fisk. <laughs> We've gone from Hawaiian Shirt Fisk to Pirate Fisk yeah. uh, in this last episode. Yeah. <laughs> Um, this, this, this is cool. It's a nice setup yeah. for Queen, Queenpin. Like, I'm interested to see, um, especially the last few months, like, ha is she traveling the country to different Fisk operations, mm. taking control? Is this the first? Is this the beginning of her plan? Is she midway through her plan? It, it, it's a, a tantalizing kind of setup for the next four episodes. Cause mm -hmm. yeah, you, you want to know where where we go from this it's interesting as well i thought maya was going to be set up as a somewhat anti-hero but more right. heroic yeah i did think uh, towards the end of hawkeye they were setting her up to be this mm. more on the side of good than this yeah. than the the setting up for queen pin okay. so i'm interested to see Oh no, that this is that they haven't set her up this way. Maybe by the end of this um uh, by the end of this mini series, uh, special presentation, maybe, maybe they they that that is this is the story. Maybe it's Bonnie who changes her. Um but yeah, for me it was just like, hmm. Oh, oh, she's not a good person still. She yeah. she maybe getting there, but no, 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 no. She's she wants to she wants to run it all. The, the queen of an empire. It's interesting, isn't it? On balance throughout the Marvel TV shows, you know, we've kind of had a relative balance of hero and villain shows. You know, mm -hmm. uh, one division, for example, it's kind of revealed that one is the vi the villain of that first yep. season, right? Yeah. Uh, by the end of it, uh, she it's kind of revealed there. Uh, obviously, Loki season one and two, the greatest villain in Marvel, gets two seasons of a TV show, eventually redeems himself, uh, and here we start Maya as. A true villain. She is a she is a member of a criminal gang previously yep. working for Kingpin. It's a it's a villain character. And whether she has a turn or not as the season goes on, you're absolutely right, Chris. By the end of this, where she's revealing, I want to be Queenpin, he's gone, he's had his run. Effectively, I'm the natural heir to to the Empire. It is a great starting point for this character. She's not a good guy. She's not in the grey area. She wants to take over from mm. the biggest bad that we've seen uh, in the street level heroes. Yeah, and and uh, to me, this is really good because it is that you know she killed Fisk, or she thought she'd killed Fisk. She you know she shot him because she was filled with rage. Still, absolutely realize his lies. You know, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. So she took it from hawkeye uh -huh. didn't mean to say that she was going to then change it was you know she's actually got the ambitions yeah and i mean in a sense what you see with her father is that you know the promise of a new beginning and yet it's not for him he yeah. thinks it's for her but she's watching him like there's mm -hmm. that moment in the crossy club where she's just watching him and she can sense that it's not necessarily above board because mm -hmm. again the facial expression from the kid who's playing the younger Maya yeah. really really good so you've got this person who's has no hearing is intently watching yeah. all the time and picking up the behavior from her father absolutely you know yep. so i this this was really really good i think and um it it doesn't bode well that we see fisk sort of alive well yeah, alive and breathing. Yeah, um, he's not dead. you know, again, yeah. to Henry's point, um, when she asks for the, you know, to, to send the message, I mean, I think she wanted one of the rail cars, the train cars. Yes, I want um, one train car. You know, he's, yeah. he's kind of, he, he rejects that, you know, he, he doesn't want to bring war, um, to the people he loves. He knows, you know, how serious Fisk is absolutely and importantly again not just the people he loves the people that love maya yeah so really important you know the, the kind of concept you get from all of the uh the, the sequences that we see with fisk and with uh with maya is that he's grooming her saying i love you i'll take care of you call her calling him an uncle him saying that he's using all of his resources to find the person that murdered her father and it's him is what brings about the rage within Maya. That's why she kills him, because she's going, hang on a second, you told me you had it taken care of, you told me you would give the person who killed my father over to me to punish him, 
but it turns out it was you all along, uh, you know, or you were behind it all, uh, all along, you know. So yeah. that's where that's where that comes from. Really, uh, really cool uh, way to end it, this episode. And and again, the setup for the season here as, as we get it. So um, a good way to a good way to close it out. Uh, any notes, anything that we haven't talked about, any little moments that, that you thought were interesting that we haven't talked about in the episode, Chris? Nothing in the episode. One quick cute thing is that they've released when they uh, told Alakwa Cox that she would be um basically playing echo and uh also they they released that zoom call essentially right and it's a really cute just set up kind of showing her and it's a bit of behind the scenes not nothing looks like too spoilery nothing if you've seen hawkeye and you've seen mm. this episode um and it's just a really cute kind of piece and then it just kind of trails in from behind the scenes into this season on right um echo um so yeah check it out yeah it, it's really nice and it's just a cute thing it also then it talks about the representation bit that we've we've talked about already just mm. really cute excellent excellent um yeah that the the coming up this season on uh on the show that got me as well uh because it went to black directly after yeah. uh kingpin and then shows you scenes from the rest of the season i was like stop it stop showing yeah. me trailers for a yeah. show that you've already released so i you know we, we've talked about this moving a few times this the show was originally supposed to be i think back in october of last year uh maybe even earlier because it was supposed to follow so directly after after hawkeye but when you make your final decision to put it all out in one day don't put a trailer after the first episode when people can just move on to the next episode because it's really frustrating you're seeing spoilers for things that yeah. are coming up uh, the rest of the season so yeah also if you're going to do that allow when you click back or stop on disney plus that it actually stops yeah and it doesn't take forever <laughs> to go yeah. oh you want me to what oh oh wait wait i have to press it five times five times yeah. then <laughs> not the ones. Okay. oh no oh you've seen it all now sorry absolutely absolutely autoplay uh, I just had one quick note because we didn't call it out in the episode. Just it was just a moment, and again, it's it's all about these moments that are that are put together to give you a sense of Maya's character. Um, so that scene as she's a young girl when she's going into her first fight or one of her first fights, um, in the Fight Club, it then transitions into older Maya in the ring uh, up against an opponent. Directly at the start of that, you get a sense of not the powers of Maya, but why her perception plays into why she's such a good fighter. And I thought it was really well done. Um, she's fighting the guy in the ring. Uh, he drops his right hand and starts to move the fingers of his hand. And she perceives that that's what he's going to throw his next punch with. And she grabs him by that hand and takes him to the ground immediately. So it's just the way it's it's put into the episode to show you how Maya thinks and how she's able to perceive her surroundings. Yeah. Um, which I thought was really cool to just no, drop absolutely. that in there. And just to add to that, after the Daredevil encounter, you know, you do get Fisk recognizing mm. that she held her own against him, as he as he says. Absolutely. So again, another little just sort of aspect to the recognition of her ability to to fight, to be adaptive yeah. to brawl whatever it is whatever it takes kind yeah of thing, exactly you know? exactly good stuff that's it for our coverage of the first episode of echo but we do have one uh final piece to say chris do you defend echo episode one shaffa 100 percent. this is a fantastic opening um wets the whistle in terms of story gives you the catch-up tells you who the character is sets it up perfectly sets up the character's the what the storyline and leaves you with that ooh hmm. mm-hmm. and I'm not talking about the coming soon on this episode season I'm saying the end of where you see Kingpin is alive mm-hmm. well it's just fantastically set up so yes I 100% defend this and I would sit for also say if like if you have someone who's not a um a huge Marvel fan this could mm-hmm. be a one to get them in as well it's just a, it's an interesting potentially very dramatic play yeah uh, and it's going to be a good one to watch so Absolutely. yes i defend this episode johnners do you defend this episode this yes i absolutely defend this episode i'd give this five wound flossings out of five wow. um, and yeah. i just was really captivated <laughs> yeah minty fresh uh, <laughs> i really captivated with this and mm. um, i love this kind of treatment of marvel characters anyway is what had me transfixed around the Marvel Netflix shows. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and to be honest, dare I say, a little bit of nostalgia came flooding back seeing this kind of treatment. I think it's really layered. Um, it, it's, you know, more 
complex, more nuanced. Uh, really, really uh, enjoyed this. And I think it's a, a great story to tell. And I can't wait to see what it is. So as, as an intro uh, to a character, which, to be honest, I wasn't particularly fussed about this show um mm. in, in leading up to it until maybe they started to say it was going to be uh a more say adult or mature yeah. treatment um but even then from the hawkeye series it's not something that i thought would spin out of it and mm. if it was i didn't think i was necessarily going to be fully on board with it but this really grabbed me um and i really enjoyed the performances the action the writing uh the the, the different uses of the camera and yeah. of sound absolutely superb so yeah five wound flossings out of five for me excellent and he hates me because i told him he couldn't watch episode two until we recorded the podcast didn't i john well there's that as well yeah sorry i don't hate you okay just sure. disappointed <laughs> just disappointed <laughs> just disappointed yeah just and, and for me as well yeah absolutely d defend this episode um you know i think it's pretty clear from uh from the way that we've talked about the episode that we all really enjoyed it and yeah there's certainly just some great elements that they can jump off uh into the rest of the series with and i think just using all that knowledge in the past to build an episode around it to start off this season it feels like the right choice it feels like if you're bringing on board people that have never watched the netflix marvel shows or didn't watch hawkeye don't know who the character of may is building a story around it rather than doing here's what happened previously within in may's story i think works really well and adding in uh, her as uh, her as a youngster and what happened with her mother and how she lost her leg at the beginning and bookending it with uh, Kingpin being alive and what her plan is to try and take over uh, Kingpin's uh, world I think works really really well uh, some really interesting characters as well to see uh, what happens with them for the rest of the season so yes totally defend this one yes great stuff I think with that let us move on to our bar quiz yes for uh, this it's back. series yes. it's back good stuff yeah, we need a bit of a need a bit of a drink after the, uh, the libation. Exactly. Yes. Uh, um, so, John, we've got our first question. Uh, we are going to be giving out uh, five questions for the Echo series, one per episode, and you'll be in with a chance of getting your hands on some Echo goodies uh, at the end of the season. Uh, most likely, um, the one I'm thinking of is uh, is the Echo comic book, uh, the collected comic book about the uh, some of the uh, history of of the character of Echo and some of that great artwork from uh, from David Mack. So uh, that's my plan. Um, so all you need to do is send in the correct answer to each of the questions for each episode to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com. So at the end of the season, we'll have five questions. You'll have five answers. And uh, whoever gets them right will be in with a chance of getting their hands on some Echo goodies. John, do you want to give us the first question? Sure. What is the name of the martial arts studio back in Mayer's hometown of Tamaha, Oklahoma. Very good, very good. We were scanning through uh, all everything that happened in uh, in Tamaha to try and come up with a question for this one. I was I was going to ask John to, to pull out a line from um from, <laughs> from one of the posters that was on there. We thought that might be too hard. I picked this as well just because there was some oblique kind of references to mm. a former uh, Marvel Netflix show as well Potentially, as yeah. possibly another MCU. It is the sort of the smashing together mm -hmm. of potentially two different shows. Very good. And that's a hint. Uh, John, do you want to get the question one more time? What is the name of the martial arts studio back in Mayer's hometown of Tamaha, Oklahoma? Excellent. That's your first question. You can email the answers in to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com at the end of the season. Uh, also, you can email in your feedback to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com. Just like Coffee and Vodka, who sent an email in to us on the first episode, he says, Greetings, fellow homebound defenders. Not much to say, but a competent intro into the series. We got the background and our brief glimpses of DD and the Fat Man, an excellent initial sparring session between Echo and the Man in Red. Interesting to learn of her intention to become the big woman on campus. More after episode two. Nice thing about having an addictive personality is finding binging sessions a great way to spend the day 3.5 cotton eye joes dropped thugs and minty wounds out of five peace and take care coffee and vodka Ooh, interesting sounds like a halloween treat doesn't it i'll give the kids some minty some wounds, minty wounds. <laughs> <laughs> or a serial killer's like um just making sure everything stays super fresh 
Oh, that's true. Yes. Yeah. Minty wounds. Minty you know, you just kind of put per- spearmint all over your knife and it's fine. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Sorry, that all problems. Exactly. Uh, good stuff, Coffee and Vodka. Yeah, glad you liked that initial sparring session um, between Echo and Daredevil. Mm-hmm. Uh, certainly, uh, I hope there will be another one because that was, for me, quite epic. It's so cool. And if we don't get to see it in Echo, maybe we'll get to see it in Daredevil. Yeah. Yes. No, and of course, if uh, they ever want to do just some crazy sitcom where uh, they have um, Matt Murdock and um, Wilson Fisk kind of being like the odd couple, Dee Dee and the Fat Man is a great name <laughs> yeah. for that Just... instead of the odd couple. Yeah, I like it. I'd like watch it. that. <laughs> Definitely. Brilliant stuff. Thanks, Coffee Vodka. Yeah, thanks, Coffee and Vodka. Uh, also, uh, over on our Facebook group uh, was some feedback. First up, Harvey Locust, who says, I was not expecting that. What a disjointed first episode. So much previously on, mixed with a Daredevil scene, a pseudo-training montage, and seeming connections to What If had me scratching my head as to where we were going to land in the story. I'm glad we did eventually settle into current timeline, and I hope we'll get a cleaner story from now on. Yeah, thanks, Harvey. Um, Obviously, yeah, different viewing experience for yourself. Um, <laughs> I guess the, that mix and match for me uh, just really was something different and unexpected and so yeah. i kind of really sort of focused in on the episode for sure so um i think they know the audience quite well i think there are going to be some people brought on by echo who'd be intrigued to see this but may not have seen other things in the past so you got to give them uh that kind of yeah uh, idea that you need to be brought into this world and, and understand oh, what's definitely. going on but i think we've landed in the same place as harvey at the yeah. end of the episode it is now a clean break. Exactly. We are seeing what's exactly. going to happen in the future. So, and I yeah. think Harvey points to the, you know, the importance of needing that in the current timeline mm-hmm. for sure. Um, so definitely, uh, see, see that. Uh, so yeah, thanks, Harvey. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Harvey. Yep. Thanks, Harvey. Also over on Facebook, we had Michael Booth who had this to say so far, so good. But for some reason, Disney plus on my PC defaulted to Choctaw audio while showing English selected. I didn't realize something was wrong until Fist started talking in the car. <laughs> well, that's definitely a different way for Vincent and Nafio to sound. Uh huh. He's a good actor then. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Uh, Michael went on to say the fight with Dee Dee was cool. I like seeing her use her prosthetic yeah. as a weapon and mm-hmm. defense, using it to take the hit from his baton, etc. I hope we get more and that his name in the very good way closing credits wasn't a one off. The Native American stuff looks interesting. I need to watch the What If episode. Extra star for Make America Skate Again. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Michael. Absolutely. Yeah. Love that. And I did know they did a whole Choctaw audio uh, selection, which is really interesting. Because in the What If episode, it was all in the Mohawk language. And then mm-hmm. they went and released a, a, a separate audio version where it was in English. Yes. So yeah. um, interesting to see they're doing the, the, the inverse here. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. It's 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 a shame when it automatically defaults to to something like that. Yeah. Uh, though for for you, especially if you if you don't know it's coming, I suppose. Uh, hopefully, the subtitles were on so you could understand what was happening at the beginning of the episode, Michael. <laughs> yeah. But I love that the options there. That's a it's a really it's really important again to have the option there so you can you can watch it whatever way you choose. Uh, they're learning over on Disney Plus. Uh, good stuff. Thanks, Michael. Yeah. Thanks, Michael. Finally, Dr. Bob Phillips says, Blood, gore, working through your problems with spine realignment and the visualization of Chris Jones' mantra, not dead until we've seen them die on screen and stay dead. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Love the richness of the New York scenes and the washed out flat bleakness of the country life. Does the queen get to escape, get crowned or get crushed? Will the Ronan and the Daredevil help either side? Will someone sue the original trauma center for an amputation when someone, some reconstructive surgery, plus or minus both bone grafting, would almost certainly have done the job on Maya's leg? Well, you can be sure uh, <laughs> that probably it, there will be a, a, a lawsuit. <laughs> yeah, well, there's definitely a lawyer play in, in Matt Murdock. Maybe uh, Echo makes friends with him and maybe yeah. he gets the, the payout that she deserves. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. And yes. Always the visualization of my mantra, not dead yet until we've seen the body, mm-hmm, is mm-hmm. the best way when it comes to the MCU. That's got my books. Yeah. Yep. And put in the ground. But even, even then. then. Even yeah. then, it can happen. It can happen. 
Brilliant stuff. Thanks so much, everybody, for your thoughts. Uh, we love to hear your thoughts. Please keep them coming in. Email us to feedback at tvpodcastindustries.com or you can pop over to our website at tvpodcastindustries.com where you can record up to 90 seconds of your thoughts uh, about the episode. Share them with us and we'll play them on the podcast. Uh, you can also join us over at our Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash TV Podcast Industries or come and follow us over on threads at TV Podcast Industries as well. No need to follow us on Twitter. We'll be leaving that soon. Yeah. So Hopefully. we can make Twitter our X. So we can make Twitter our X. Exactly. Exactly. You can also support the TV Podcast Industries family by subscribing at tvpodcastindustries.com and leaving us a review on your favorite podcast catcher. Also, why not share the podcast? Because sharing the podcast is what, gentlemen? Sharing the love. love. Oh, yes. And if you really love us, you can always head on over to patreon.com or buymeacoffee.com and support us that way by heading to patreon.com slash tvpodcastindustries or buymeacoffee.com slash tvpi. Absolutely. And thanks once again for everybody that supported us throughout the last 10 years of podcasting. Indeed. Uh, yeah, it's it's been so good having everybody share the podcast or support us through Patreon or Buy Me A Coffee. Uh, or just feedback, because feedback's awesome too. Uh, this is just the beginning of our Echo podcast on TV Podcast Industries. We will be back next week with episode two of Echo Loak. Speak to you next time. Bye. Yeah, thanks so much, fellow defenders, for joining us. Until episode two, keep watching, keep listening, and of course, keep defending. Bye. Bye.